live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, a former inmate at Ashley Youth Detention Centre has broken down while detailing instances of sexual assault and rape during her time behind bars. The Commission of Inquiry heard the victim survivor turn to drugs and alcohol following the incidents and still battles with ongoing trauma. And a warning, some viewers may find this story distressing. Behind bars at just 12 years old, a woman the Commission is calling Charlotte gave harrowing evidence of what she described as the worst time of her life. During the three years in and out of incarceration, she says she was sexually abused by both workers and male detainees. When recounting interactions with one staff member known as Edwin, Charlotte told the inquiry, he'd talk to me really dirty. He'd touch in between my legs. It just made me feel yuck. When serving her second stint, she was led into the facility's gym by Edwin, where she says he let four boys do what they wanted to. This culminated in Charlotte self-harming, only to be told by a worker to grow up and stop doing it, claiming it's making more paperwork for them. Another experience saw her taken to Apex Hut with six other boys before one of them was all over her, telling the commission he had sex with me and I just had to leave it like that. These traumatic events led to her deteriorating mental health, saying nothing was ever done. Charlotte has since left Tasmania, but when asked how these experiences affected and changed her behaviour, she told counsel assisting she doesn't like anyone touching her and struggles to be around men. After 22 years employed at Ashley Youth Detention Centre, Assistant Manager Fiona Atkins was probed on the current culture. How would you describe the way in which young people at Ashley are treated by staff? Um, they're certainly treated very well in, in most cases that I'm aware of. Pointing to interactions where young people threaten to make false allegations. Young people have actually voiced that they will say, um, you know, you touched me or whatever, so that they can get a payout. The extent of ongoing staffing woes also uncovered. We've got high cases of... Uh, workers' comp, um, stand-downs. Grace Evans, 7, Tasmania News. And if you or anyone you know needs help or this story has caused distress, contact the Sexual Assault Support Service on 1800 697 877. Child safety workers have walked off the job protesting poor working conditions. Union members preparing to sit down with Premier Jeremy Rockcliffe next week, proposing an emergency workforce package that boosts pay, grants additional leave, provides mental health support and fills job vacancies. The pay and conditions is, um, is to attract more workers. That has been the problem for the 13 and a half years that I have worked here. We're not looking to talk, we are looking for a commitment. We are looking for his personal intervention, like he did with the nurses who face similar issues, to deliver on these solutions. With 200 vulnerable youths currently without an allocated worker, the union says it will escalate action if the government doesn't comply. The Liberals' anti-protest laws have suffered a huge defeat, with a key component of the bill voted out. Despite being amended, the public annoyance offence was deemed too broad, with community lobbying over the past two months being felt. One final plea made loud and clear. Don't pass the bill! Don't pass the bill! Protesters gathered out the front of Parliament House with anti-protest laws in front of the Legislative Council. It's where they actually stop them going to work that there is an issue, in my mind. So this amendment is seeking to capture that and narrow it completely to that. Murchison MLC Ruth Forrest today put forward key amendments after the bill was considered again aimed to ensure only those who intend to impede or prevent someone from reaching their workplace are affected by the public annoyance clause. The government was quite convinced that the bill we had before us as drafted was sufficient, but we will not oppose these amendments. 
However, in the eyes of some, it's simply irredeemable. I would argue that people should be allowed to cause an obstruction. Often that's the point of protest. If you're not causing an obstruction, you're not being heard. Essentially what this says is we put a person's right to attend work above the right to protest. With reservations over who could be charged with public annoyance, the offence was still deemed too broad, voted completely out of the bill, including by Ruth Forrest. A later clause relating to trespass laws was also amended. This is a, a clear and more explicit way, um, especially about the intent, as mentioned by the Honourable Member, um, so I will be supporting this amendment. Mersey MLC Mike Gaffney's own attempt to lower the penalties unsuccessful. For more on the bill's future, we cross to our state political reporter Josh Duggan. Josh, what's next for the bill? Kim, debate will continue tonight as members consider the bill further. We'll see how that plays out, but it's clear any vote is going to be close. For the government, the political fallout is huge. It's had multiple attempts at passing these laws, and with the public annoyance clause gone, there's now a very large hole in them. It was the most contentious part of the bill, so some activists are already celebrating that as a victory. But even if the pared-back bill is passed by the upper house, it will have to go back to the lower house again. So there's still more to play out. Kim? OK, thanks very much there, Josh. Well, Tasmanians promised winter energy bill assistance could be waiting until spring, with the state government failing to launch a $15 million program. The Energy Saver Loan Scheme, which provides interest-free loans to purchase energy-efficient products, is still not up and running. In question time today, the Premier said the government was searching for a delivery partner, with an update expected in coming weeks. Protesters from the Bob Brown Foundation have returned to the Tasman Peninsula for a second day as they take on salmon giant Tassau. Activists on board boats tried to block Tassau's vessel, the Aqua Spa, from unloading salmon into fish pens in Long Bay. One protester even managed to scale one of the empty pens before being moved on by police. No arrests were made. The environmentalists have vowed to continue their action until industrial fishing in the area is abandoned. A group of older Tasmanians has taken its fight for safer road conditions to Parliament House. The residents from Gilston Bay's Clarence Lifestyle Village say they want the speed limit on a nearby section of the East Derwent Highway to be reduced from 100 to 80. They visited the House of Assembly as Franklin MP David O'Byrne asked on their behalf about their calls. Infrastructure Minister Michael Ferguson said state growth has conducted community consultation with the majority favouring the current limit of 100. Day one of AgFest 2022 has wrapped with 500 exhibitors showcasing the best of Tasmanian agriculture. Thousands of patrons enjoyed some fun in the mud at Quirkus Park for the first full instalment of the festival since before the pandemic. AgFest is off to a cracking start. With Tasmanians heading to Quirkus Park in droves. We are aiming for our 50,000 across the four days at the moment. We are really looking like we're going to get that. Visitors big and small taking in the sights with a smile on their face. I'm looking forward to watching the full drives um, getting stuck in the mud. And stuck in the mud they did. Oh, Celebrating 40 years of Tasmania's premier agricultural event, the sense of community is what keeps bringing exhibitors back. This would have to be our 15th year at least, yeah. They put on a good show here, so yeah. All the Tasmanians come out, so yeah, we love it. I've been coming for 20 years, so it's, um, yeah, it's an annual event for us. We've been demonstrating for 20 years and it's great to catch up with all the return client clients and return clients and new clients, so it's great. It's also the first time in its history the event has been held in August. It's great to finally be back after the long period and after we um, postponed for a little bit. Uh, the weather's held off. We didn't need the rain the other day, but as rural youth fashion we've made do. Utah's also promoting Tassie agriculture. We've got some um, drone flying activities where people can come and find out about using drones in agriculture. From helicopter rides to sheep herding, there's something for everyone, especially those wanting to learn the tricks of the trade. <coughs> Patrons learning about the art of dog training, while others got up close and personal with another four-legged friend. Very fluffy. Boots, utes, all in cahoots, the one-stop shop for everything agriculture has had a successful first day. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News.
The lack of affordable housing in northern Tasmania is costing the region millions, according to a new report. The economic impact study by housing advocates Everybody's Home found skyrocketing rents in Launceston are deterring people from moving here for work, resulting in a surge in job vacancies. The report also revealed 36% of low-income households in Launceston are experiencing severe rental stress. The City of Launceston is set to host its inaugural Father's Day memorial service next week. The initiative has come to fruition to reflect and remember the men in our lives who are no longer with us. For a lot of people it's a very sad occasion and a memory of the dad that they've had so what we're planning to do is to hold a memorial service on the Friday before Father's Day for people to be able to come together. This service will be held on September 2nd at the Carvilla Memorial Park. A true Tassie underdog story is galloping into the nation's psyche once again as we mark 50 years since Piping Lane went from obscure contender to Melbourne Cup champion. Piping Lane's 1972 Cup is joining its modern day equivalent on a trip around the state, rekindling memories for the champion's connections. The historic town of Westbury welcomes a piece of history. Melbourne Cups old and new, nervously clutched over every clip clop. The Melbourne Cup was always the pinnacle trophy sitting up in prime position in the trophy room. Lisa Buckby is the granddaughter of Piping Lane's trainer, Ray Trinder. His grandest prize, a source of pride. I remember as a young person that the buses would pull up out the front of Nan and Pop Trinder's they would pile out, hold the cup, drink out of the cup. Its golden shine was born from the days of black and white. And followed by Piping Lane as the crowd roared. The horse which few knew and fewer backed. But Piping Lane has won the money, a boil over. My life would have been, I think, completely different. I'm sure it would have been if, it, if Piping Lane hadn't come along. Although John Letts rode Piping Lane that day, he's better known nationally for asking the questions of future winners. So what would he have asked Piping Lanes if someone else was on board? Where did this horse come from? <laughs> and did you think it had any chance? And that would have been the right sort of question because, you know, he was sort of unknown, more or less unknown there, and, and he took out the biggest prize. The famous three-handled cup has been awarded every year since 1919. Its value, a whopping $275,000. But priceless to aged care residents in Deloraine who had their moment with the cup earlier today. I've booked myself in with a couple of them in the next couple of years <laughs> and, and I've got to make a decision now to which one. With this memento, you're welcome anywhere. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. The state government is putting fresh and nutritious food on the menu with the expansion of the school lunch pilot program. More Tasmanian children will benefit from the initiative with the number of participating schools set to double. Right now we've got 15 schools across Tasmania serving up 3,000 hot meals for kids every week as part of our pilot. There has been overwhelming positive benefits. So our attendance has increased, our students are able to concentrate for longer and um, for example a lot more effectively after lunch. The program will now serve 30 schools across the state, hoping to promote greater well-being and health literacy among the younger generation. The Australian Antarctic Festival is sliding in for another year, celebrating Tasmania's links to the icy continent. This expeditioner's exhibition showcasing breathtaking stills captured during the Mawson's Huts Foundation conservation trip last summer. Most people don't get to go to Antarctica, so it's really important to um to convey through our photos what it's like, what an amazing place it is and how worthy it is of protection and being valued. I mean, it's the one continent on the planet that people work peacefully, people work together, a great spirit of international cooperation and that's something we try to bring into the festival. Tasmanians can look forward to an array of displays, public lectures, an opera and even a family fun day when it opens to the public on Friday. A local shelter is crying out for cat lovers as a boom in newborns overrides a number of Tasmanians willing to take them in. From knowing nothing about felines to fostering more than 600, a foster caring grandma says it's a decision one won't regret. 
From a distance, Vicky might look like a typical grandmother out on a morning stroll, but come a bit closer and you'll find not one, but nine babies. These are now between four and six hours between feeding. They still have a bottle at night time before they go to bed. Fostering 656 cats over six and a half years, Vicky says it's the affection that keeps her coming back. They're the biggest time wasters in the world because all you do is sit there and oh, yeah, go, <laughs> and with kitten season right around the corner, others have the chance to do the same. We're having literally hundreds of kittens and cats coming into our care every month. Ten Lives calling on Tasmania's public to help them juggle the influx as its number of foster carers, usually at 250 this time of year, plummets to 120. can be for a weekend, it can be helpful, but it could be for months or it could be uh, ongoing for the whole year. Looking after these little guys has never been easier with 10 Lives providing everything from food to vet care, toys, bedding, kitty litter and 24 hour support. All carers are supplied with training and while it might be hard to say goodbye. I used to go down to the bottom down there and cry my little heart out <laughs> down the bottom of the street but until I got a phone call from 10 Lives saying Vicky, you know those kittens you dropped off 20 minutes ago, they're all adopted. Vicky promises the rewards outweigh the bittersweet parting. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. The future of basketball in our island state looks bright with a new partnership designed to bolster the already high number of juniors taking up the sport. Joining forces with the Jack Jumpers, My State Bank is backing the NBL franchise to innovate and develop grassroots programs in conjunction with Basketball Tasmania. There's some work to be done around infrastructure and, and obviously um, the biggest piece for us at the moment is to find support staff to go with that. So that's you know, officials, that's school benches, that's referees. The overall goal is to see the sport become number one for participation rates by the end of 2024. The Launceston Tornadoes live to fight another day in the NBL 1 after grounding Geelong in the first round of finals. Their star-studded trio of Keely Froling, Kelsey Griffin and Mariana Tolo are still getting used to having so many sharpshooters on the court. New systems for, for Tolo, although she picks them up really quickly. Um, you know, it just takes time to, to understand where people are going to be and read, you know, what they're going to do next. Next up, the Torns face Nana Wadding. Launceston lost by 14 points the last time they met, but the Spectres will be without WNBL star Alice Kunek, who's heading overseas. Meanwhile, the Hobart Chargers will play their preliminary final on Sunday, hosting either Kilsyth or Bendigo. A crowd of around 1,400 watched the Chargers win their quarterfinal off the back of a watertight defence. you got some of the best defensive players in the country, like Sam McDaniel, Jared Bear, so I'll just say, Sam, go and lock that guy up, and he can do it. The only question mark hangs over forward Jacob Richards, who suffered concussion at Jack Jumpers training. International hockey is making its long-awaited return to Tasmania. The Hockey Roos and Kookaburras will play four double-headers in Hobart in February and March against Argentina, Spain and the United States. It means locals can see homegrown Commonwealth Games champions Eddie Ockenden and Josh Belt back where it all began. The last time international hockey was played in the state was in 2019 when Australia hosted Germany in Hobart. Details on tickets will be released soon down the track. To sailing, skipper Duncan Hine has led the Derwent Sailing Squadrons alive to its second straight win at Hamilton Island Race Week. The Sydney Hobart regular now holds a slight lead over its closest rival in its class, with three races remaining in the series. Winds reached a top of 14 knots in the day's racing. They're expected to intensify to around 25 knots in the coming days. Good evening, Hobart and Burnie 13 degrees today, Launceston and Devonport 14. Friendly Beaches, our high 16. St Helens and Bushy Park 15. Wynyard and Low Head 13. The Bass Strait Islands and Strawn 12. And Lyawini reached 9. Cloudy conditions prevailed with showers mostly over the west, central and south. The onshore stream following a trough pushed a cloud across the south of the continent. More is circulating around a low off the New South Wales coast. Tomorrow, a strong high over the bite will be the dominant and possibly only feature on the map tomorrow. The winds will have that cool southwest aspect again. Uh, generally 15 to 20 knots, a tad stronger over the east coast, well, swells at 3.5 metres in southern and western waters. Minor flood warning for the meander is all on that list for tomorrow. 
Forecast for Hobart, 15 and cloudy. A shower or two for Signet, 14 the top and 15 the high for New Norfolk. Launceston, a high of 17, a cloudy day, partly cloudy for Devonport, cloudy for Campbelltown, 15 the high there. 15 also for Burnie, Strawn a shower or two, 13 the maximum and 15 for Smithton. St Helens a high tomorrow of 15 degrees and partly cloudy, Swansea the same and 14 the top for Fingal. On Friday, light showers over the west and far south, clearing in the evening, a cool start with patchy fog and frost, a light shower developing over the north on Saturday, otherwise fine, and on Sunday it looks like showers over the northern half of the state. Conditions improving for Perth, 23 tomorrow, a shower or two in Adelaide and Melbourne, a late shower forecast for Sydney, 20 there, sunny and 22 in Brisbane.